This book is a collaboration between Ann Morris and a photographer by the name of Ken Heyman. Ann Morris is a bilingual woman who speaks both Spanish and English, and she writes in both languages. She lives in London, and her most recent big adventure was a trip to Ghana two years ago. Ken Heyman was a famous photographer who worked mostly in New York City, but he also traveled around because when he was at Columbia University, he became friends with Margaret Mead, famous uh, sociologist who traveled all over the world, and uh, Ken traveled with her to take photos with her. And the name of the book that these two amazing people put together is called Bread, Bread, Bread. Bread, Bread, Bread. People eat bread all over the world. There are many kinds, many shapes, many sizes. There's skinny bread and fat bread. There's round, flat bread, and there's bread with a hole. Crunchy bread, lunchy bread, and bread to soak up your egg. Pizza, pretzel, they are bread too. Bread on the table, bread on your head. Bread is good for you. It helps you grow, it makes you strong. Making bread, shaping bread, baking bread. Toasting bread. Cooking bread over the fire. Fill up the basket. Off to the market. Bread for sale. Bread behind glass and bread at street markets. Breaking bread together in places all over the world. Have a bite. Mmm, delicious. There's skinny bread, like baguettes. There's fat bread, like a batar. There's round flat bread, like pita bread or roti or naan. There's bread with a hole, like a bagel. And in the back of this book, Ken Heyman has a list of where all the photos came from. Israel, the United States, Peru, Ghana, England, Indonesia, France... Another one from France, Israel, Portugal, United States, France, India, United States, Germany, Portugal, Sicily, part of Italy, Greece, United States, United States, United States, Italy, Mexico. And then the last group of photos is from Ecuador, Peru, Israel, Israel, Hong Kong, part of China, Guatemala, Israel, and the United States. For bread to be really good for you, it should be whole grain bread. It gives you the kind of carbohydrates that your body needs. Here's a picture of the few little pieces of equipment you need to make bread at home. Here's a handwritten recipe card for a grant loaf. But if you do a search for Doris Grant Loaf, you'll find the story of the bread, and it'll be easy to find. You put the water, one and two-thirds cups, into a big container. You can use less than a full teaspoon of salt. To help feed the yeast, you can use muscovado or turbinado sugar. It's a light brown sugar, real fine crystals. It still has the color molasses to it. Or instead of that sugar, you can just use liquid molasses. Don't forget the yeast. One teaspoon out of a jar like this is perfect. But the packets of yeast have about two and a quarter teaspoons in them so be sure to measure. This is what whole wheat flour looks like. You could use oat flour, you could use rye flour, but you want to have at least two cups of some kind of whole um, grain flour for it to be a healthy bread. This looks almost the same, but this is white or all-purpose flour. You can use this up to about one and a half cups and still have a healthy whole grain loaf of bread. When you add all the flour into your liquid, where the yeast and the sugar and the salt went with the water, you can start to stir it around. You stir it around slowly, then in the middle, and then through, and you mix it up. It doesn't take very long. When it looks like this, you can stop stirring. You don't want the bread to stick to the pan. 
So you can fix that pan one of two ways. You can use a paper towel and some vegetable shortening and rub it all around inside the pan and then add a little bit of flour. Shake the extra flour out. Or you can use a special spray if you have that that's meant for um, making bread not stick to pans. Either way works and they will stop the bread from sticking to the pan. This is right after stopping the stirring. That's how the batter looks. This is half an hour later. The batter starts to grow because the yeast is in there. And if you put your batter into your greased um, baking dish, it will fill up the dish about halfway. Cover the baking dish with a big cardboard box that's clean on the inside or the kind of uh, container you use to wash dishes in the sink. Wash it out real well, dry it, put it over the bread. Half an hour later, this is what the bread looks like. It rises up above the top of the baking dish. You didn't have to knead it. All you did was stir it, let it rise, put it in the baking dish. It's ready to go in the oven. Put the loaf into an oven that has reached 400 degrees and bake it for 35 to 40 minutes. Start to check it at 35 minutes. This is that same loaf of bread after 38 minutes in the oven. A cake tester put in the middle of the bread comes out clean. It has a nice dark look without being too dark. Let the baking loaf cool for maybe 10 minutes or so, and then take the loaf out of the baking dish and set it on a wire rack for about 30 minutes so the bread can cool. Anytime after that you need a grown-up to help you, uh, use a knife, a serrated knife is best for cutting bread like this. Cut the bread into slices and you can make toast with it or you can make sandwiches and you can use it until it's gone. You usually take a few days but it'll be good for three, four, five days. And that's the experience of reading about bread, bread, bread. If you're interested in this author, she has a website www.authorannmorris.com You can find out even more about her.